all right so uh, we'll be starting with the very first class today and today i'll be just going through uh, the introduction as to what cp2 paper is all about and uh, moving forward how we'll study cp2 in class and how what should be your uh, preparation strategy uh, moving ahead so those are the key pointers that we'll be focusing on today so today we'll not be having a very long class maybe just uh, a 40 45 minutes class wherein we'll be just giving i'll be just giving you a introduction on what cp2 paper is all about and uh, how we have to actually you know practice uh, cp2 so that we clear it in uh, very of in our very first attempt so uh, as the name of the paper is modeling practice so it deals with a lot of modeling and uh, we will be actually doing a lot of modeling in cp2 uh, now uh, cp2 prior to 2019 this paper was known as ca2 so i'll just go through what the paper format is all about and firstly what you will learn in this particular subject so here you will be creating a model from scratch so there are two papers um, there are two papers uh, that we'll uh, be appearing for in cp2 paper 1 and paper 2 generally both these papers are on simultaneous days uh, first is paper 1 and then on the very next day we have paper 2 the same thing is for both ifoa and iei earlier iei used to take the both exams on the very same day but now they have changed their pattern so they are taking it on the two simultaneous days right now uh, we'll be first talking about what we'll do in the uh, on these two days so it will be a 3 hours 20 minutes examination for ifoa for ia when it is online uh, from home it will be 3 hours 30 minutes and then we, they, when they'll move to the offline mode that is center based exam they might change this again back to 3 hours 15 minutes right so that is the entire duration of the paper both the papers paper 1 paper 2 both the papers are of 100 marks each and then what they do is they take the average of what you score in these two papers and according to what is the passing marks they decide whether you are passing or failing the exam right so that is how the calculation is done 100 100 and they take the average of both the papers now uh, in both the days on both the days what we'll be doing is that we'll be using ms word and ms excel wherein in ms excel we'll be creating a model and in ms word we'll be writing what we have created on ms word uh, ms excel now the difference between iia those who are appearing from iia anyone who is appearing from iia just raise your hands anyone all right no one so if you are appearing from iei in iei you have to do everything on ms excel itself you don't have to refer to ms word so basically whatever we do on ms word has to be done on ms excel only so we actually write a lot we actually have to type a lot on ms word so that typing has to be done on ms excel itself for iia for ifo definitely we'll be using both excel and word on both the days right so clearly it deals with a lot of modeling but that does not mean that it will include a lot of um excel because they just use basic functionalities basic uh, features and basic functions in excel to create these models no pivot tables no use of pivot tables no use of very difficult uh, charts or visualizations just very very basic uh, functions very very basic features are being used in excel just that what the model is given we have to understand the scenario the background and we have to present that in the on the ms uh, on the ms excel actually so here what all abilities will be required in cp2 if you are good in excel from day 1 then it actually gives you a little boost in the sense that you will be very much comfortable with excel from day 1 itself if you are not very comfortable with excel no worries because we will be moving very slow so you will be actually getting an experience of how to work on excel what are the shortcuts that we should use we can use because in cp2 you might have heard the only problem on paper 1 that most of the people face is the time 
constraint the problem that we face is that the time is very limited 3 hours 20 minutes in that time we have to complete a full model and we also have to present that model on our ms word so it actually becomes very lengthy and to finish it in within these 3 hours 20 minutes sometimes it obviously becomes very lengthy so that is one thing which we have to be careful about from day one so i'll be guiding you as to how we can manage our time what things we have to consider so that we complete our paper on time and with perfection because see it's not only about completing the paper you have to uh, keep a point keep a track of all the places which are actually which on which we actually get marked on so if you are unnecessarily writing many points but if those points are not giving you any marks or any score then there is no point right and i have seen in cp two people just failing by two marks three marks four marks you might have also seen this right so this only happen because we are not concerned about where all we actually get the marks so we actually have to see where we are getting those four marks where we are getting those three marks and we have to focus on those places and also we have to focus on places where we can easily score since the paper is lengthy so we might not be able to complete all the aspects of the paper right so it is very it becomes very important that we understand as to what portions of the entire paper is important and what portions we have have to focus on right so that is very and from day 1 we will be actually working very smartly with cp2 so that we get that at least we reach that passing marks and above that obviously we can score a lot right so that is one thing you have to solve a proper problem a proper a uh, background will be given to you on a particular scenario and then you will have to first read the entire background understand the scenario and then present it on your excel a small data might be given to you depending on the background whatever the background is for example they are trying to um calculate the total fund value in case of a life insurance so they will might be give you the sum assured they might give you the different ages they might give you the mortality rates so all these data will be given to you on the basis of this data you have to calculate the total fund value at maturity so you will be given with all the information you have to also verify here we also have to verify the data in the sense that we have to check the validity of the data whether the data is correct for example if i have a age column so i have to make sure that this age column uh, the age has to be obviously greater than the minimum age if the minimum age is 18 or it has to be less than the uh, maximum age given in our policy so these corrections will be made uh, first the validation and the correction will be made on the given data set then we will be using this corrected data to make our entire model and present it on ms word so this is the entire process what we do on day 1 which is paper 1 right for paper 2 what is the paper pattern for paper 2 the model is already given to us so generally you will see this that paper 2 is somewhat um, not on i will not say it's easier but it is a kind of not lengthy as paper 1 so it is shorter than compared to paper 1 right so that is your paper 2 in paper 2 a scenario is given to you again you will have to read that scenario excel spreadsheet will be given to you which has or which contains the entire model and then what you have to do is you have to read the scenario you have to understand what they have done in the uh background or what they have done in their model because see uh when two people are making a same working on the same scenario you might work differently right you your outcome might be same but the way you work with that particular model might be different so you first have to understand as to what they have done in the spreadsheet and then they will give you few extra additional questions on how to complete the full model so you have to complete the model and then you have to move on to your ms word where you have to give the summary of the entire model that you have that has been given to you and what you have done so this is paper 2 paper 2 is kind of shorter because here the model is given to you you just have to complete the model so actually uh, the only thing where people face problem is that in the model construction if you don't if you are not able to construct the model then 
you actually get stuck over there so here also we have a solution that what if i'm not able to create a model which is given i'm not able i am understanding the scenario but i'm not able to present it on excel it is very common and it's a very common uh, issue or a problem which is faced by most of the students that is not in uh, not we don't have to worry about it why because i'll tell you even if your model is very much different from their ideal solution you can still clear your cp2 exam if you have written everything on your ms word correctly so here this is the only difference with where people actually they fail to understand is that your marking distribution is made in such a manner that even if you're not able to complete the model as a whole you can still be able to clear cp2 so all these small points we'll be discussing as and when we move ahead we'll be mainly focusing on areas where we can actually score marks right so that is very very important so we are creating a model and you are documenting the entire model in something called as audit trail which we do on the day one on day two what we do is model is given to us we understand the model we complete whatever few steps are left of the model and we present the entire thing on ms word uh, and it is something called as summary report that we create on day two so this is how your paper structure is uh, segregated uh, so what actually you know the difference between uh, paper one and paper two is that in paper two you mainly focus on communication you mainly focus on communicating your results so basically paper one is creating the model and then presenting whatever you have done step wise on your audit trail that is your ms word on day two on paper one what you have to do is model is given to you you have to understand the model derive a few extra additional results and present that in the form of a summary as if you are presenting it to a client so you have to interpret all the results that you have got you have to give a proper conclusion and then you have to provide a set of next steps what are these next steps these next steps are basically where you have to properly write as to uh, what can be moving forward what can we do additionally with this particular model which has to which has which is given to us so it's a good amount of uh, 9 to 10 pages that we write on ms word on day 2 right now the uh, duration has been changed so both on day 1 and day 2 the examination is of 3 hours 20 minutes for ifoa for iei it is 3 hours 30 minutes when it is online when you are uh, having your exam center based exam the time might change for this attempt which is the july attempt it is 3 hours 30 minutes right so now paper 1 will focus on mo modeling as i said documenting what you have done on ms word if it is iei you write the same thing on ms excel so there is no much of a difference between iei and ifoa both the papers are same both the uh, bodies are same paper 2 mostly deals with understanding the model communicating your res uh, results interpreting your results and communicating it in a good manner to a particular client right so that is what and all and one more very important thing is that both the papers have different models so the model which you are getting on paper one day one it will be different from what you are getting on day two so it will not be the same for example on day one we are getting something related to life insurance on day two you can get something related to pension or something related to gi or not at all related to insurance so you might also get many models which are not directly related to insurance at all or maybe not directly related to something an actual framework you might get any model it can be a model on a school so in a city there are five I'm just giving you an example of a model which you can get for example in a city you have five schools right so in these five uh, schools you are comparing the results of the students maybe you have taken a sample of 30 students from each school and then you are trying to compare as to how the average score of the different uh, schools vary with each other and whether it is uh, dependent on the location so maybe three schools are located on the north side of the city and other two schools are uh, situated on the south side of the city so is there any location difference between the so this is a simple model which might not directly be related to insurance at all but it can again be 
coming as a scenario and you will definitely get a lot of these different types of scenarios where you will not see anything related to insurance right and at the same time you might get something related to life might gi or might be it pensions right so it can be anything or it might be something related to climate change which is a very hot topic in the actual domain you uh, if you have appeared for cp3 cp1 uh, you might be seeing a lot of questions related to climate change uh, last two three terms they are actually giving a lot of questions on climate change even in cp2 they gave a question on solar panels uh, in uh, april 2021 i guess so they have been focusing on climate change also so these are the different scenarios you might get a lot of different scenarios it is just all about understanding it and presenting it on ms um, excel now here uh, paper one as i said a model will be given to you and you have to present a model in such a manner so that your colleague who is your colleague someone who is at par to your knowledge level whatever you have whatever knowledge you have will be same as that of your colleagues right so it can be presented to a colleague and at the same time you can present it to your manager and when i say manager a manager is someone who obviously is more knowledgeable more experienced than you right so you create a model in such a manner so that you can uh, you can actually present it to your colleague and at the same time to your manager and we write a detailed documentation which we call as uh, audit trail uh, where again we write it in a particular manner so that your colleague can understand at the same time your manager can just quickly skim through because your manager will not be having so much of time the manager is only uh, you know worried about some important aspects in your documentation so the manager can quickly skim through and understand that what you have done in your ms excel is properly presented on ms word clear so paper 2 is again all about where we um, are actually focusing more on summary side we are more focused on uh, keeping the report concise with respect to our client and with respect to our manager so it's more about give, uh, presenting it in a very formal manner so that it can be presented directly to a client right now that is what your uh, paper 2 is all about and here it will be presented to mainly your senior manager senior actuary so you will be constructing your entire summary report in such a manner then uh, there are no eligibility requirements if you have not appeared for any cmcs papers there is no as such proper eligibility requirements but yes if you have studied your cm1 cm2 cs1 cs2 which are your core papers then it might also uh, give you a benefit or an advantage because there might be some models which might be somewhat related to some of these past papers not directly or not 100% but some parts might be related to these past subjects now um, again what they say professional code of conduct is that make sure you are creating your own model you are not referring to any pre built electronic model which was already there you are not using a template pre created template uh you or pre prepared template you are not copying it from someone else so all these things are definitely there which you have to keep in mind now what should you know before starting cp2 subject is that you should know basics of excel when i say basics uh basic functions like sum count count if if uh, uh average sum product these basic functionalities and then uh, a few basic features like goal seek creating simple looking charts um then maybe uh, in uh, pay, in uh, uh, iei recently they gave a, a question on data tables so some of the very very basic features and basic functions you don't have to deal with uh, very advanced level functions like or advanced features like pivot tables you are not allowed to use pivot tables unless and until it is stated and so far they haven't mentioned about pivot tables anywhere in their paper neither in iia nor in ifoa so you don't have to refer to pivot tables you 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 cannot create actually pivot tables if you are creating pivot tables you might not be getting marks at all and even you are not supposed to use very difficult uh, functions for example if i talk functions like indirect function so you are not supposed to use very difficult functions you are not supposed to use very difficult features of excel because it should be presented in a very very simple manner so we just have to know basics of excel uh, 
so there will be some videos which i'll be giving you uh, on basics of excel this is only for those who are not very accustomed with these few features right and then uh, if we talk about uh, ms word so ms word is simple plain typing no hard and fast rule no equations nothing it is a simple typing that you have to perform now here also there are a few shortcuts and uh, some a few so, uh, some some uh, shortcuts are there which i'll be teaching you all so that you all can you know quickly complete your audit trail and your summary report so that it becomes easier because otherwise it becomes very lengthy right so you have to actually adopt a feature uh, ad adopt an approach which is very very simple which is very easy to change and make sure your excel spreadsheet is a uh, fully complete uh, function uh, based or maybe there is minimum of manual interaction which you have to do with excel for example when i say manual interaction there should be no hard coding of any parameters or any input values it should mostly all be in functions there should be very less of manual interaction with your excel spreadsheet now this is uh, what this is what we'll be doing when we move ahead obviously but all these small key points key things are actually something which you will actually get marks on for example presentation also matters in uh, cp2 presenting it in a neat way uh, in your excel spreadsheet if you're moving from left to right top to bottom all these important things like keeping your parameters uh, separately keeping your results highlighted in a different color all these presentation also uh, matters and it gives you marks so i'll be also discussing moving forward as to how we can uh, at the same time uh, reducing your time and keeping making your excel spreadsheet look very good so i'll be teaching you that as well as we move ahead right so keep the formulas as simple as possible and you have to clearly flag your areas so what is flagging basically if you are creating a particular uh, model and there are some places with where you have to create a extra focus on so that your manager just sees that particular area your colleague sees that area and can clearly understand that there is a difference over here that is known as flagging that we do and avoid any type of manual interaction as what i have said now uh, the only thing uh, what i believe is to if you want to clear your cp2 on your first, in your first attempt which everyone has to obviously what you have to keep in mind the very first thing which you have to be uh, you know keeping in mind is you have to practice if you are not practicing it is see it is not like any cm cs papers so in cm cs papers you uh, if you are just going through the sums and even if you are not maybe writing all the sums uh, all the sums are not practicing by writing or something like that here if you are doing that you will never be able to clear your exam you will have to sit down and practice you will have to sit down create your models in excel you have to sit down and type in ms word now only thing which i feel uh, is the very 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 common thing which i feel is that why students fail cp2 exam is that they never sit down and type they never sit down and create a model what they do is they just read the question uh, they just go through the model and they believe okay this is something which i understand i can present it on the examination day and they just go through the ms word and they are never sitting down and typing they are ne never sitting down and practicing if you are doing this trust me you will never be able to clear your exam and it is a fact i have seen many students who actually are very very good with excel who actually are very very good in typing still they fail to clear the exam if they are not practicing sitting down and practicing their um, all the papers in a particular time bound manner so this is very very important so i'll be guiding you as to how uh, you all have to practice moving ahead how many papers you all uh, can practice because considering all of you are mainly working so you might not have uh, so much of time to take out for cp2 so i'll be guiding you as to how much time you have to take out every day and how much you have to actually practice so that you can clear the paper in one go so that is also very important uh efficient use of time as i mentioned so i'll be guiding you as to every day how much time you have to take out and in that particular 2 hours whatever you are taking out every day how you can actually uh work on ms excel work on ms word but trust me this is a 
warning uh, consider it to be a warning maybe which i am giving you on day 1 if you are not practicing you will never be able to clear this particular exam never you will have to practice no matter how many papers you have just seen or maybe how many how good you are with excel how good you are with typing unless and until you are sitting down and practicing you will never be able to clear this particular exam right now uh, this is just a split of time which is there uh, although i am not this is something which was there in the material of cp2 but i actually use a different uh, split of time which i'll be you know discussing with you all as and when we move ahead but just to give you a heads up on day 1 you all know that you get the scenario and then you have to build a model and present it on your ms word so what i according to me what i feel is that when you get the paper you have to read the entire scenario so considering most of us are very slow readers uh, with time we also have to improve our reading speed because the fast you read the faster you will be able to read the entire scenario understand the scenario and quickly move to your spreadsheet so you have to increase your reading speed from day 1 and how can we do that i'll be guiding you now how actually you know you can improve your reading speed is that when you are reading anything you have to be fully uh, concentrated uh, on what you are reading that is very very important secondly quickly just skim through all the lines so when you are reading make sure you are 100% concentrated on what you are reading this is i think the uh, key to improve your reading speed because this was a problem which is which was faced by me and i have seen students facing it a lot that their reading speed is very slow right so in order to improve your reading speed you will have to be fully concentrated on what you are reading and obviously as and when we move ahead we will be reading different scenarios so we will improve our speed as and when we move ahead right so reading may be considering you are reading the entire thing in 15 to 20 minutes let's say suppose you are reading it in complete 20 minutes and then maybe you are taking out 5 to 10 minutes to plan as to how i have to move ahead and then you are spending your time on modeling the maximum time which we have to spend on excel is 1 hour 15 minutes uh, 1 hour 30 minutes maximum and then we have to move to audit trail why i am telling you because if you see it's a 100 marks paper on day 1 the uh, spreadsheet portion or the model portion will only be of approximately uh, 46 to 50 marks will be only given 50 is also what i am saying on a very upper end generally it is somewhere around 46 marks to your spreadsheet rest of your 50 to 60 marks or 50 to 55 marks in your audit trail so you can understand the weightage now here it is almost equal weightage or maybe audit trail has more weightage but trust me most of the students what they do is they spend more time on their audit on their on construction of model so maybe they are spending 2 hours on their model and they are just left with 1 hour for audit trail or maybe even less than that that is the worst case scenario because in such a case you are actually losing on a major chunk of your 55 marks on audit trail you will not be able to write it properly you will not be able to uh, justify your audit trail properly and you will end up losing a lot of marks even if your spreadsheet is correct if your audit trail is not complete you are actually losing a lot of marks there so that particular mark uh, time splitting is very important that we give equal time to audit trail as well those whose typing is very very amazing or it's very fast you all can bet on yourselves and you all can take out maybe 1 hour 15 minutes or so for audit trail for ms word and you may be able to complete it very nicely for example if i talk about myself uh, i consider that my typing is really good so i uh, i took out maybe my screen oh second is it uh, from start it
give me one second. Is it uh, I think problem. I think now it's fine, right? Now it's fine, right? No problem. I I'll share this PPT with y'all. Although what I was saying was more important, um, and I actually wasn't referring to PPT a lot, so it's fine. I'll be sharing this PPT, so no worries. So basically, for paper one, when I was saying the time split which is given over here is actually uh, not exactly what we'll follow. This is what is mentioned in the material of CP two, but we'll be following our own uh, splitting of the entire time. Which I'll be guiding you on. So basically, the reading time and the planning time completely will be around 20 minutes, 20 or maximum on an upper end 25 minutes. Then we'll be spending time on a model construction 1.5 hours maximum. So 1.5 hours plus 20 minutes gone, and then next one and a half hours um, should be on your order trail, and there you go with your three hours. 20 minutes so here this is what is i was talking about is people generally give a lot of time on spreadsheet and they forget about order trail or maybe they undermine the underestimate the uh, order trail and at the end of the day they end up losing a lot of marks because order trail actually contains 55 to 58 marks which is more than half of the weightage Weightage is given to your order trail. So that is one thing which I which I have seen is one point where students actually fail to clear the exam. Now the second thing when we talk about paper two, in paper two generally time is not a big constraint over here. So a model is given to us. We have to read the entire scenario. We have to then create the uh, the model is already created. We have to complete the model. So uh, we have to read the scenario and we have to understand. all the functions that have been done on the model right so that understanding also takes a little bit of time so reading the model maybe 15 minutes and then understanding the spreadsheet or the model which is given to us so maybe around again 10 minutes 10 minutes in that so 25 20 to 30 minutes maximum you are giving on reading the scenario and understanding the entire spreadsheet and then uh, completing of the entire uh, rest of the steps may be uh, 15 marks to 18 marks maximum will be given to your spreadsheet work so only i will say half an hour is more than enough to complete the entire model so first half an hour read the paper understand the spreadsheet next half an hour we complete the entire spreadsheet so we are done with one hour so next two to and a half hours minimum we have to give to our summary report because here we have to write approximately 8 to 10 pages and when you are writing 8 to 10 pages which is approximately more than 3000 words so 3000 to 3500 words we have to actually sit down and type and it is not only about typing it is also about interpreting the results so you actually have to think and then type in order trail we don't have to think so much on day one we can just simply whatever we have done on spreadsheet we quickly type it down on ms word but here on day two we actually have to think a lot while typing so we have to interpret the results in our own words we have to explain the results in our own words uh, and then we have to give a proper conclusion and then we have to give proper next steps so this process this entire thing actually contains a lot of marks approximately 80 to 85 marks is on your uh, is on your summary report so if you, if i am saying 80 to 85 marks is is on your summary report you actually have to give 
more than 80% of your entire exam duration to that word file right and this is again something where i've seen students failing they again leave one and a half hours only for their summary report and they end up missing a lot of chunk of it and they simply are not able to clear the exam so again we'll practice in it in a such a manner that we are actually focusing a lot on our summary report rather than focusing only on the modeling aspect right so that is again very very important two two and a half hours summary report you will actually have to give in order to present a good summary in order to clear the exam because 80 to 85 marks is not a joke right now um, <clears throat> when i say how to approach or answer so for paper one the model should be very simple as i mentioned you have to read the scenario and present it in as simply as possible we also the data what is given to us we have to validate the data and we have to make the corrections you always have generally four to six marks on data validation and data correction and then the next uh, maybe um, 30 marks or something is on 30 marks approximately is on your modeling and next seven to eight marks is on your how your spreadsheet is looking uh, you know how, how you have presented your work manual is there any manual uh, you know interactions so all these things so in total 40 to 45 marks is given to your spreadsheet portion again we'll be having a quick you know uh, review as to what we'll have to do um, also when we writing when we are writing audit trail it should be in a particular format it should be uh, first uh, there are different sections that we have to write in audit trail so what these sections will be all about how we have to write the assumptions uh, how we have to write the entire methodology section so there are uh, what so there are uh, four sections in your audit trail we start with the introduction or the objective of the entire scenario then we write about the data so what all data is given to us what all checks we have performed on the data and what all corrections we have performed on the data then we write assumptions so how these assumptions are to be written how much marks is given on this assumption all we will be discussing and then the last portion is the methodology portion where we explain the entire method of our spreadsheet onto our audit trail so these are the four sections clearly defined and within each section also we have a lot of split of marks is there for example we have marks on uh, writing reasonableness of the data reasonableness of the results we have marks on carrying out self checks so as in when you are performing your model in between the model also you give a lot of checks so just to see whether you your model is acting correctly or not so those checks also give you five to six marks those reasonableness also gives you five to six marks so this we'll be talking as we move ahead which is again very very important in order to clear the exam paper two again is for senior actually so you have to understand the model you have to understand the scenario which is given to you complete the model quickly as fast as possible keeping in mind what all they have done and generally in paper 2 you will be able, you will be asked to create a lot of charts a lot of visualization so we will be also discussing as to what all different charts are there in ms uh, excel <clears throat> different types of charts and uh, marks is actually given on presentation of these charts so whether the chart is properly labeled or not whether the graph is properly labeled or not whether you have a suitable title whether your x-axis y-axis are properly labeled you have proper units uh, or and again the type of chart the selection of the chart if you're constructing a line chart whereas it has to be a column chart so all these things are also very important that we'll be discussing and then how to present these results on your summary report so summary reports uh, summary report have uh, seven sections so again we have objective we have data section we have assumptions we have methodology so this portion is similar to that somewhat not exactly somewhat similar to audit trail and then after that we have a results section so results section is generally of 20 to 25 marks is on the results section where we put in all the results together all the graphs all the tables and we uh, present and we interpret the result in a simpler language for our client 
then we give the conclusion there is a conclusion section approximately of four marks and then at the end we have next steps again somewhat of 20 marks 20 to 22 marks so that next steps is also very important what all next step you can take if you have this model what all next steps we as a uh, actual team or maybe we as a consulting company or maybe we as a consultant can take ahead so this is the entire summary report again split into different sections and all these sections are of particular marks and particular things should be there now here uh, I have just made a quick table uh, what should be the length of audit trails so audit trail is generally of uh, seven pages six to seven pages uh, see if you write it very nicely it will be around seven pages and a summary will be somewhat somewhat between eight to ten pages so more than 3500 approximate words in case of audit trail it's generally around 2500 to 3000 words right that is what the length of audit trail is again a very uh, not a very short one when you are typing five six pages six to seven pages it is actually taking you one hour because you are thinking and you're typing right summary report is generally always longer and always requires more of time than audit trail. Audit trail is what I consider on an easier side than summary. Right. So this is the entire uh, section um, on which you will be getting marks. So paper one audit trail approach is 10% content. Audit trail content is of 19%. So basically this entire thing is of your audit trail. So you all can see checks 3% model development techniques 15% so this is your entire paper 1 distribution paper 2 is gen C uh, the major chunk of it is on summary only so actually 80 to 85% of your paper is summary on day 2 on day 1 50 to 55% is your audit trail right now um, audit trail approach so I have actually you know guided you uh, about this uh, already so there are a few appropriate techniques I'll be giving you some tips also on audit trail I'll be making quick pointers for you all so which you can keep with yourself handy on the day of exam so that you all can just you'll, you'll be able to remember all these points actually these points are uh, generally we skip these points while writing the audit trail so if you have these points ready with you you all can just quickly refer to it and it will help you in writing your order trail without missing any particular aspect right so that is also very important and again order trail is something which you have to present to your colleague and to your senior manager both should so the communication should be in that particular format only so that your senior actually can just quickly go through the order trail and can simply understand what you have done on your MS Excel without actually seeing your MS Excel so that is what audit trail is all about then uh, we have the content which I have already stated that what are the different sections of audit trail so these are the different sections of audit trail your self check reasonableness check this is also I have talked about now approach to summary this is also I have already what talked about so what are the different sections so you have the objective or the introduction then we have the data section assumptions method we have the results section conclusion and next step so these are the main sections of your entire summary report again each section has a proper marking distribution within the section what all you have to write again I'll be giving you quick pointers on all these particular sections so that when you are typing your summary report you don't miss out on any of points right next steps so next steps is one of the most important portions of the entire summary report because this contains 20 to 22 marks so you actually have to sit down and write 25 points minimum i always say that please type 25 points so that you can at least get if it is of 20 marks so that you can at least get good 17 to 18 marks because not all of your 25 points will be absolutely correct or not all the points will be will be giving you one mark some of the points will give you 0.5 some of the po points may give you one mark some of the points may not give you even a single marks so it is very important that we write 25 good points I'll be giving you many many points you don't have to be uh, worried about and also at the same time I'll be explaining you as to how you can 
create your own points on what basis you can create your own points seeing a particular scenario so it will be depending on the data that we have depending on the scenario that we have and the scenario and the situation that we are dealing with right now it is very uh, so just a quick tip is that uh, it is very important to keep uh, saving your work regularly that is obviously very very important so this is all about for cp2 introduction now it's a very uh, something which is very very interesting it's a very interesting paper and those who are appearing for cp2 with some other paper and you have ma uh, major paper if you are appearing for any other major maybe cscm or any SPSA papers, then I know you will not be able to give a lot of your time to CP2. But actually, I'll be guiding you as to how you can distribute your entire week. Uh, even if you're not taking out every day for CP2, I'll be guiding you as to how you can uh, efficiently use your time for CP2. Um, you will have to actually go through a few videos in the starting, at the starting, and then it is very, very, very important that you ha you attend the live classes. So live classes are very, very important in CP2. Why? Because there is a lot of things to discuss. And that discussion can only happen in live classes. If you are watching the recording of those live classes, uh, you might be able to understand what I am saying, but you will not be able to cross question at the same time. right? So it is very, very important to hear both the sides. Even because you have to, you have your own explanation. I have to hear that and I will have to justify or I will have to validate whether your thinking process is going on the correct direction or not. So it is very, very important that you all attend the live classes. We'll have the live classes on Sundays only. Uh, and generally, uh, we'll be, you know, com covering all the classes in English, complete English. Why? I'll tell you. Because we become good at communication. Because at the end, you have to type in English, right? So, uh, I have seen this is something, uh, this is a problem which is faced by most of us and it is nothing to be ashamed of that we are not able to construct sentences properly in English. And this is something I believe most of us have this problem that we are not able to construct the sentences in English nicely. Till now, you have appeared for your SP or SA or any S uh, CM, CS papers. All these papers were too much on the technical side. So, we were not so much worried about, you know, English typing, English language. But CP2 is a paper where we actually have to be worried about the communication. Because here, communication is very, very important. Your English language is very, very important. Uh, your grammatical mistakes is also, you know, uh, a concern. And at the same time, you have to communicate quickly and you have to type down quickly so that because of, because of time constraint, right? So that is very important. So we'll talk in English in our live classes, which is very important, which I have felt over the over time that it, it is actually very important. And, um, and also one more thing, you have to practice during the week. I'll be giving you some targets and you have to meet those targets before the Sunday, before our live class, so that we can discuss that on our uh, Sundays, right? So that is also, again, very, very important. So, yes, it is all, that is all about the entire uh, CP2 introduction. It's not very difficult, but something if you practice and something if you just, you know, uh, what, what all I'm saying, if you just keep a point note of that, some important things then you will be definitely be able to clear cpt or uh, cp2 on your first in your first attempt so yes any any doubt or anything you'll want to add over here uh by when can we expect uh see or uh, tanish there is nothing as such syllabus completion in cp uh it's all about practicing so there is no predefined syllabus in cp2 Right, as you have seen, you can get any model, any scenario. So there is no as such a proper syllabus. But yes, uh, the first time when we construct the first model, which is your first time we make the entire paper one model and audit trail, paper two complete the model and summary. That is when you that is when you actually first time create and understand, and then moving ahead, you definitely have to practice a lot. So I think the first model will take a lot of time 
so three weeks maybe complete the first model and then after that we'll be making a lot of models so maybe one model in one week so there is no syllabus as such in cp2 it is all about practice and i will give you some weekly targets right every week i will give you some weekly targets make sure you all meet those weekly ta targets those weekly targets will not be over ambitious because i know all of you are are working so might be just able to take out 2 hours every day or maybe some days you are just taking out 1 hour so i'll be giving you targets accordingly uh, so no uh, syllabus as such tanush right but yes um all the papers you will be finishing all the papers if we see all the past papers you will be finishing i think uh, within 2 months and then uh, you will be given a lot of time to uh, complete so we will be having mock exams also so i'll be giving you a lot of mocks as well those who are appearing from iei you all have to solve both ifoa and iei papers and those who are appearing just from ifoa you all can just appear for ifoa papers just ifoa past papers are enough you don't have to refer to iei papers at all right that is one thing uh yeah so no syllabus as such i'll be giving you targets no material so there is a uh, cp2 material if you all want i can share it with you but actually no point in going through that material because nothing is nothing as such is mentioned there whatever uh, important things are there i have already discussed cp2 is not syllabus defined there is no particular defined syllabus it's only past paper it's actually only past paper that we have to do in class so no material actually i'll I, i actually don't recommend any one of you to read any material right any other questions uh hetakshi that i'll give you in the group in the evening i'll be uh, giving you that particular target for the entire week i'll be mentioning it in the group right anything else any other questions all right okay thank you danish so basically um it's a, it is something that you have to be regular with i have seen students my students i will not i will not lie with you all so my students they were very active in class they used to attend my live classes but the only problem they never practiced a single paper there were just one or two such students they never practiced anything in class or anything other than class so they never sat down or maybe created a model they never sat down or wrote any audit trail or any summary and actually they were not able to clear the paper so that is one thing maybe they just failed by four three four marks the only problem is that they did not practice so you have to actually practice that i will guide you shelly how to manage cp2 and cp3 you can definitely very 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 easily manage these two papers very easily i'll i'll be giving you weekly targets just meet those weekly targets and you will be done with the syllabus so don't worry if you are appearing cp2 with any difficult cm cs or C sp essay papers also no problem easily you can do that but just that you have to meet those weekly targets whatever i give you that is very very important in order to in order to clear cp2 right so cp2 cp3 you can easily manage no all right so thank you so much uh, for today i'll be giving you the targets uh, by 5 5 o'clock in the group make sure you complete that and we'll be having the next class on sunday most probably around this time only or if the time changes i'll let you all know right okay thank you so much thank you